Hey folks, Matt from Art of the Image.com. I've had some interesting discussion on the video I did recently about the Canon mirrorless announcements coming in September. Uh, the full frame mirrorless announcements. Uh, Michael Ma, one of the commenters on the video, this is very interesting. He says, One thing I've been hearing a lot lately from Sony users is that Sony has five years head start in the mirrorless business. But what they don't understand is that the 5D Mark IV and the D850 are both DSLR mirrorless hybrids. They lack an EVF, but they have the technology to focus through live view. Focusing without a mirror and having it match the performance of a DSLR AF is what Sony has been working on for the last five years. They finally did it, but they've been playing catch up, not advancing in tech. Dual Pixel Autofocus is a more advanced PDAF, and unlike PDAF, which is freely available for any camera manufacturer, Dual Pixel Autofocus is Canon's proprietary technology. Canon will put in a really good EVF like they have been doing on their latest M models, and with Dual Pixel AF, Sony's going to get pushed back into almost as good pile once again after a few months' success. They should have read this comment first before buying into Sony uh, fanboy's non-techie propaganda. So this is interesting. So Michael's essentially saying that we already have um, expertise and technology already being built and used in the 5D Mark IV and the D50 because they're DSLR mirrorless hybrids. The fact that they can live view um, and obviously the fact with the 5D Mark IV with the dual pixel AF. Now, where I might tend to argue the point here with Michael is that Sony arguably has a better system now than Canon's dual pixel AF. When we look at the advancements made in the A7R3 and the new A7 III, I know my good friend Peter Gregg's been experimenting with that a lot, and in his estimation, the A7 III is actually better at dual pixel AF type focus. In other words, it will track and follow you in video mode smoothly and accurately without stuttering at a, in, in a better um, performing way it has better performance in that sense than the Canon dual pixel AF. For instance, when he was using a 5D Mark IV or if he uses um, dual pixel AF in an 80D or an M50 or something, um, he's finding the Sonys are doing that better. They finally tweaked it to the point. Up until then, he was finding and other people were reporting and in my own shooting as well, that the Sony was pretty much as good as Canon's dual pixel AF. However, now making the argument that the a7 III anyways, and I believe too he found that in the a7R III, uh, is actually better in his estimation uh, in most regards uh, than Canon's own dual pixel AF. So they've kind of beat them at their own game. So uh, I would throw that in there as a caveat because I don't think Sony's going to be pushed back into the almost as good pile because I think they're already as good or better than Canon in terms of dual pixel AF. And then what else are they not up to par with Canon on? I mean, they've thrown in every feature you could think of on these cameras. I mean, the A7 III is an amazingly full-featured camera, has an amazing performing sensor. It's got a great standard autofocus system. Battery life is decent now. Like, everything about it's a pretty good camera. I personally don't like the fact that it's kind of more design-wise and, and menu system-wise. It's almost more of a computer than an actual camera. However... That's just a personal thing as far as how it shoots and the performance of it. It's top notch. So, but this is kind of interesting because it is true. Michael does have a point that because those are mirrorless DSLR hybrids, the tech has been there for a while. Uh, and I hadn't really thought of it from that angle before that this isn't new for Canon. I mean, the Canon already does have some mirrorless. Uh, and Nikon did in the, in the One Series. So they have some experience, which they'll be bringing forward. Um, and I guess to separate the two, Canon, I would expect to come out with something pretty amazing. And they've also said that they're going to stop this, their previous history of stripping features, that they're going to be making things more feature-packed, they're going to be concentrating more on video and at lower price points. This is reassuring news, and hopefully they will do that. Nikon hasn't been doing that. They give you a lot of features, especially in their lower-end stuff. The big thing, um, and I think Nikon knows this to stay competitive, is they have to have something equivalent to the dual pixel AF. As I said, I would argue Sony's already there or better than Canon. Canon's is excellent. Nikon doesn't have something that's there yet. So that's, that's going to be the big thing, that despite that they have the mirrorless hybrid, they have not done that dual pixel AF type autofocus well yet. So I have high hopes for Nikon. I think they know this is their issue. I think they're going to tackle it and they're going to fix it. And I think we're going to see something amazing in these new Canon full frame hybrids. I hope they're not going to make me 
have egg all over my face. I hope they're not going to prove me wrong. I think they know there's a lot riding on this, and I think they're going to be coming out with something that's going to blow us away. That's where I would be putting my money if I was to put, place a bet on this right now. I think they're going to bring back some of the Nikon shooters that have left the Sony. I think some of the Sony shooters are going to see the Nikon stuff, and there's going to be stuff there, and just the camera's going to be so amazing. You're going to see some people coming back to Nikon. I think it's going to be awesome. But Michael does have some interesting points here. Again, I hadn't really thought of it from that angle that we already had this um, mirrorless tech in the D850 and the 5D Mark IV because those are hybrid, mirrorless hybrids. So what do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to hear what your feedback is. Do you agree with Michael? Are these mirrorless hybrids? Uh, has this already given Canon and Nikon? The, the, the technology was already there. They've already got their feet wet. They're not newbies to it. And so we're just seeing going to see them refine it. Do you agree with me that it's more Nikon that needs to make sure that they nail this, especially with the dual pixel AF? Let me know. Curious to see. Let's discuss it. We're, we're all very excited, at least I am, and I know a lot of you are, about the, the, uh, the Nikon full-frame mirrorless announcements. Also, a lot of people are very excited about what Canon's going to release. I mean, they're, they've been a lot, making a lot of noise about how much they're going to be packing into features on this. So let me know what you think. Let's discuss it. What do you think of what Michael has to say? What do you think about this whole topic? Um, thanks very much, Michael. It's a very thoughtful and insightful comment that you wrote in there, and it made me think, and I really appreciated that. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be uh, back soon here on ArtOfTheImage.com.